Hi, and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Nicholas Bauer, and today we're gonna tie an articulated burbot. This is a, a pike fly, uh, but I believe if you tie it in a little bit smaller sizes, it's an awesome fly even for big brown trouts. Uh, we're gonna tie it with a wiggle tail, uh, we're gonna tie it with a sculpin head, and the rattle in the front part of the fly. It's going to be articulated, that means it's kind of jointed. And um, it's a really fun fly and fairly simple to tie. So let's begin. What we're going to start with is to tie the back part of the fly. Uh, it's not a lot of materials. It's mainly bucktail, some uh, chenille, some ostrich hurl, and some flush, and a few feathers. And of course, a wiggle tail. Um, so we're going to start with the back hook. And that's, I tie that of a Partridge Universal Predator and 2X or 2.0 um, and the X version, it's a little bit heavier wire. Uh, I like to use a little bit heavier wire on these flies because when pike are feeding on these, they can take them very, very aggressive. And also sometimes because you're pulling this on the bottom, you can snag in logs and stuff like that and you want to have a little bit stronger hook, a little bit heavier wire. So we put it in the vise. Um, nice and tight and um, put some super glue here on the hook so we get a good base to it. I'm tying all of my pike flies with the uh, Techstream power thread, 100 denier thread. It's a really really strong thread and um, I really like it. it. It usually never fails. So it's important to glue the thread to the hook so it when you're pulling these materials really, really hard, you don't get the thread wraps to kind of move away from the, from the hook. So glue it on, good and secure base. We're gonna use some Bauer Pike titanium wire. Uh, it's a single strand titanium, uh, and it's really good to get the wiggle tail to get the extension from the hook here, as you can see in the bucktail here, to get it off from the material so it really hangs in the end of the fly so it doesn't tangle and stuff like that and titanium is a really good uh, material for that so we're going to use 20 centimeters of this it's usually the the right amount of the standard bucktail that you can buy uh, titanium for you guys who doesn't know what it is it's a very very durable material whatever you do it always comes out straight so it's an awesome material to use with we're going to use a fast attachment clip. It's a small snap uh, that it has a loop in one eye and a snap in the other one. And then you can really, really simple change different colors and size on the wiggle tails to it. So we put that on the titanium like that. And then we're going to have a small bead, just a simple bead. Um, these are uh, beads that you can buy for coarse fishing. Um, any fishing tackle shop will have it in their range. At least any good fishing tackle shop will have it in, the, in their range. You make these titanium ends even. You pull the bead on here. And you pull it straight up to the fast attachment snap like that. Then we're just going to tie this onto the hook, nice and even. So put them side by side and you just make some strong thread wraps on there. All the way back and forward. You can leave a few millimeters here so you don't get any trouble with the upcoming head. So now it's just secure back and forward. You have this snap here. So we simple can just change tails. You just snap it on like that. And it's super simple to change them. And this bead just prevents this snap from really going far down and making tangles. And also it's UV so it gets that extra point out there. We put some glue here. I prefer this Zappa Gap glue with the pencil. They're very simple to use. 
And now we're going to start to build up the, the rear fly here. And what we're going to do, we're going to have a bucktail collar of yellow bucktail. We're going to put two saddle feathers, some chenille, some brown and yellow bucktail here in the front, and some ostrich hurls and just sparsely dressed with some flashable. So we start out with some with some bucktail. This is fluorescent yellow. And uh, take a nice bunch. Depending on how heavily you want to dress, dress this one, but uh, just don't overdo it. But have a bunch that is a fairly nice size. Have the ends nice and even. You take the bucktail bunch. You go with the thread all the way back, so it should be kind of in the same height as the barb. You take this bunch of bucktail and you kind of try to spread it around the hook like that. And then you make a few turns with your thread and then pull with a straight bobbin like that. And then it will kind of get some volume um, of the hair. And then we make a few turns here. Um, just to make it secure. And then we cut the existing material off here. What is important to think about now is when you're tying this fly, both of these hooks are going to ride hook up. The tip is going to ride uh, on the top side of the fly. And that is because you, uh, the burbot uh, or, or eel put is a similar fish to it. They usually swim on the bottom like that, um, going for food. And also when they're spawning and migrating, they're moving. Uh, they're always actually swimming along the bottom. So you want to be able to drag this on the bottom and not get tangled or snagged in logs and stuff like that. So you have to think about that when you're tying the fly now that you're actually going to tie it upside down. So you don't, you don't put the materials in the wrong order here or in the wrong color combinations. Because the eel put is usually white, or the, the burbot is usually white and, and yellow on the, on the belly and very dark in the back. So that's the first thing we do, the bucktail color. And you want that to be evenly spread, nice evenly spread around it. And also to kind of get the fibers to get just a few centimeters or millimeters away from this, or longer than this snap here because then you can get the tail kind of get into the material in a really nice way. So we're going to choose a few feathers. Or not actually a few, we're going to choose two feathers. This is just a normal uh, saddle. This is a whiting saddle um, in yellow. So you pull two feathers that are very similar in length and stuff like that. And you just pull the fuzz off here. We don't need that. So we have them like that. And then the feathers are they're bent in a certain direction like that. So you don't want to you want to tie them in looking like this. You know, so they're kind of facing out like that. Because then if you look to this fly here, when it's done, they kind of go out like this. So when you pull, the they're gonna go into the body of the fly, and as soon as the fly stops again, they're gonna go slowly out. And it kind of gets a little bit more natural. Um, movement on the fly. So put them like this. This can be a little bit tricky but usually the best part is to, to hold the feather with the thumb and the finger and then just make some very light turns of thread. Don't put too much tension to it because as soon as you put too much tension to it then the feather has a tendency to twist like that and you want to have it nice and flat facing outwards. So a few turns we're just going to do the, exactly the same thing on the other side. Put the thumb there, hold it like that, nice and even. And then the further you get to your right, then you can put more tension to the thread like that. So now you have the feathers nice and even on both sides. And they're kind of facing really out like that. So you're going to get a good swimming motion to the fly. So we cut this extending, or we cut this stems off. And, uh, of course, some glue. The more the glue, the better it is. 
not really, but use some glue at least. Um, and now we're going to put some flashable on here. And I like to use some yellow and also some matte gold. Um, we have this, um, we call it a Bauer Pike Flash. Uh, it's a little bit wider. It's similar to the Hedron's Magnum Flashable. So we're going to take three strands here. This is the yellow or lime color. It's like a, it's like a bright holographic gold kind of the deal. And then we're going to go for three of the uh, Magnum Flashable from Hedron. This is the color matte gold. It has all the movement and stuff like that, but not really the shine to it as most of the other Flashable has. This is three fibers. We fold them together and we cut them up like that. So we make that bunch there and we're going to have that bunch there. And then I usually want to have some material flashable on the on the lower side and on the top side. So we're kind of going to divide these into two parts here. So three strands there. We take the power pike flash here. We do the same. Divide it into half. Put them on these bunches. And we kind of just twist them together. I mean, it's six strands, so it's not a lot to twist together, but just make sure that they are a little bit tapered so the fly doesn't become just straight off. And then we're just going to tie them in like in a 50-50 part here on the top. So 50% of the material to the left and 50% in your hand. I'm going to go up with the thread all the way to the end of the feathers here. And then we're going to try to have these fibers lying on the top of the fly. Like that. And just fold them over. When you fold the flashable, you get much more durability of the fly. So now we got them kind of on the top side here, spread evenly 180 degrees on the top of it. Or this is actually going to be the belly of the fly. <coughs> and now we take the second bunch <coughs> and do the exact thing on the other side. Try to get that thread in there, fold that over, and tie it in. So there we go. So now we have the fibers of the flashable, we have the, f the bucktail, and we have the feathers. So now the tail is, is done. Uh, we're just going to put some glue there to secure everything. and. From this part on, I usually tie the fly upside down because otherwise I usually forget <laughs> getting older. Um, I usually forget that actually I'm, I need to tie it upside down. So I usually change it so it's nice and <coughs> set on the other side here. And then we're going to use this chenille. It's, <coughs> it's, it's a long hair holographic chenille. It's super good for this type of flies or big pike flies, big buggers, big streamers. It's, it's really a good material and it's very durable. So take like 25 centimeters of this. It's fairly cheap too, so you don't have to be super careful with it. You tie it in in the tip here. You go with the thread all the way back again. Tie it in here. And then you tie the thread like one centimeters from the um, hook eye. And then we just wrap this, try to get the material nice and evenly folded backwards towards the tail. It's a really good body material that gives a lot of volume and also a nice contra contrast and color to it. There you go, and then we tie that off. And this part we have left here we're going to use for the second hook. So we just fold the material back, make a nice closure there. And then we have kind of the tail and the body is done. So now we're going to do the front part of this. And now we're going to want to have 
uh, yellow bucktail on the belly and brown bucktail and some ostrich hurl on the top of it. So we're going to start with getting the, the bucktail evenly spread on the top and on the bottom. And uh, just put a small drop of glue here so to secure everything. And then we're going to go for the bucktail again. We're going to use some yellow, the same yellow. We don't have to overdo it because the fly is going to be kind of skinny and narrow. That's actually overdoing it. Putting it like that. Here I usually take some of the longest fibers away actually because I don't want to have this bucktail super long. Put it on the table like that and then we're going to have the same amount of brown here. This is just a standard dark brown. Take some of those shorter fibers off because this is going to be the top of the fly so it doesn't matter if they're a little bit longer. And now we're going to tie this hollow style like the kind of the, the man himself Bob Popovich who created this system. So we're going to go for yellow for the back side here or the other belly. So we take this bunch, we tie it on the underside. Don't put the material all around the hook, only on the lower part of the hook now. So make a few turns and then just give it a good pull like that. Work that through a little bit. And that should, should be mostly spread 180 degrees on the lower part of the fly now. And then we're going to have the brown on the top. So we do the exactly the same thing with the brown here. We hold it like that. And then we give it a good few turns and give it a pull like that. And then we kind of work through the material here. So it's nice and strong, putting fairly amount of pressure on the thread actually because you don't want to have this twisting around like that. So now you want, you want to have a nice kind of a line here between the yellow and the brown on both sides. I'm pretty happy with that. It's okay. So what we do now is we kind of take all the existing material off here. Like that. Just to keep it nice and tidy. And also you don't want to have any material that pushes any uh, buoyancy or, or, um, or weight to the fly that we don't need to. Then you just take a, a tube, or a, this is from a pencil, but you can take any tube uh, that has a fairly large inner diameter. You lift the material, you try to, try to get this tube evenly spread around the bucktail here, and then you just gently push it back like that. And then you kind of get all the material at once. Then you just give it a good kind of a pressure on here. So you kind of get the fibers to convert to lying backwards. But you still get that good volume that you want to have from this. And then you kind of take the thread like that and don't go over like that. You want to go straight to the right and then forward. Otherwise you will get a very strange gap here in the bucktail that you don't want to have. And then you kind of build like a collar here that will support the bucktail. So it doesn't kind of rise too much. You just want to have that nice angle with good volume and good movement. So sometimes you need to make kind of a hill and sometimes it's a little bit less. Here it's going to be quite big hill because this material was a lot of volume in it. So we just need to make a few turns more here. I usually put some glue between here so we just so we don't get the thread wraps to kind of collapse. So we build it up quite high and tight here. Now we can take that off and see how it looks. 
Now I'm kind of getting the, the right angle I want to this. The through, the really the through um, shape of the fly will come the first time you wet it. But it, this is kind of, when they are fresh from the vise, you have a little bit more volume that you will have when you're tying them or when you're using them actually. Then you put the clamp over there and we're gonna have some flashable spread over this again. I usually don't put any flashable on the belly side here, uh, on the second bucktail bunch. Um, so we're just gonna run some brown and some uh, matte gold flash on the top and some ostrich churl. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have three strands of this Bauer Pike flash in brown, or you can use copper too, works too. Just gonna go for three strands here. Like that. Oh, actually we got four, we'll just use three. And then we're gonna go for three of this matte gold. Again here. You wanna have some flashable in these flies, but not too much. Same procedure again, fold them all the way up, divide them, put them on the table, take the other one, fold it, cut it, and put them on the table. Kind of mix them together, like that. It's a nice mixture. Make a slightly a taper to the ends here, so the fly looks nice. And then we're just gonna tie them on, on the top of the fly, kind of evenly spread, 180. And just try to get that whole bunch in at the right time. And then you fold them back, putting your thumb over it a little, little, little bit like that. You get that nice spread. And then we're gonna work back again. And now they're kind of spread evenly, 180 over that. Put that clamp over there again. Put some glue here so you can, can be able to kind of work with the thread a little bit slightly to your left, like that. And then we're gonna have some ostrich hurls. These are the plumes, and uh, this is a well-used one too. But we just take like eight or, uh, I would say eight to 10 fibers like that, cut them off, try to have those that are a little bit different in length and size, because it's gonna give that nice and tapered back to the fly. Ostrich hurls are very, very simple to tie in. Definitely if you have some little bit wet glue to tie them into. So just put the tips in the glue and kind of just give them one or two nice wraps like that. And then we can just spread it out a little bit on the top here. It's gonna look much better when this is gonna be on the first fly. But that's basically this, the rear fly is done now. So we just make a, a whip finish here. Like that. We cut that thread off. And we put some glue here to secure everything like this. So there we go. And at this point, I usually color this head with a brown marker, but I forgot that. So that's the back fly, it's done now. We have the feathers, we have like the brown back to it, and it has a yellow belly. That's going to be much more slimmer as soon as you kind of wet this fly down. So now we're going to um, join that together with the first hook and the, and the second fly we're going to tie here. This is tied on a on a jig hook. This is the Universal Predator X um, from Partridge. This is called the jig, 60 jig. And this is a 60 hook. And as you can see, it's kind of a very steep angle here. And also the head is twisted um, 90 degrees. So it's not 
flat like that. And that helps this fly to go really to move like this on the, on the bottom. So it's a, cool f it's a really cool hook that you can tie a lot of fun patterns on. We're going to have this, we're going to have a Bauer power rattle uh, under here, and then we're going to have a whole bunch more. But we start to tie this, put it in the opposite way, or not really the opposite way, but it, the opposite way of the, of the fly, how it's going to turn out. I mean, because we're going to turn this, it's going to be like this, you know, they got, both of them are going to ride with the tip up. So the first thing we do is we take some wire. This is a 40 pound partridge wire. Uh, you shouldn't go too thin in the wire because then you can actually have the, the two parts coming apart, you know. This is, you cannot use the titanium wire here that we used for the stinger or for the tail because it's, it's too fragile when it comes to having movements and stuff like that. So you want to have this, uh, this is a 49 strand wire and it's coated with plastic so it's much more durable. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie this on here with a few beads. So tie like, take something like 10, 15 centimeters of this or I can actually measure it. Oh, it's close to 20. It's a little bit too long, but we'll live with that. We take it through the loop of the first fly here. We'll make the parts even. And then we're gonna use some beads to um, join these together. And the beads have, helps the fly to prevent it from snagging and gets that right distance between the hooks. If you wouldn't have any beads here, they will just snag and tangle and stuff like that. So they're very, very important. We're just gonna use, I mean, the color combinations here are brown and yellow. So we're just gonna use some, ew, some brown and yellow beads. So we we'll take two yellow and then use, just do some, this is, I like this disco brown here. We're gonna use those three. If you want to have a little bit more distance between the hook, you can go up to four beads. But after that, I think it's, it becomes too long and too much, too simple for the, for the fly to tangle after that. So once again, because it folded out here, we're going to put them together like that. Then you can put these beads in whatever order li you like. I put a yellow one, put the disco brown here. If we don't have to chase it, chase it too much. And then we put the yellow one on again. Make the tips on the wire even like that. And you just pull these beads, not super tight. You should have some air so this, so it can really move, but not too much space here so it can move too much because then it's gonna start triangle again. So fairly tight like that. And then we're going to tie this onto the hook. So what we do is we put some glue on the hook again. Like that. Put the thread on. Cut that off. And they go with the thread all the way back to the barb again. And now we have to think here because this is usually the place where you do things wrong here. This is going to be the belly of the fly, you know, this is going to ride up. So we have to think about that when we are upside down and stuff like that. So what we do is we take this, the yellow is going to face towards us and you want to have this, you want to tie this so that the yellow comes up, of course, and also that this last bead, oh, I'm just going to make a few turns here so you can see it. You should have this distance here, like we had to the fly. Just gonna make a few turns here so it stucks. So you want this last bead here to, to rest on the hook. Then I think, in my opinion at least, they don't tangle so much. This is usually a very good distance to it. These guys can move just a little bit and they can actually create some, some noise too that attracts the fish. So that's how it's done. Make sure that this is not tangled or anything because then the, the, the back hook is going to twist itself. I usually take one of these clamps here and just clamp it on so I have it nice and tidy. Then you're going to work these wires with the thread all the way 
not all the way in front but I like to tie them like half way onto the hook nice and tight because now we can if you have like a 30 pound pike on the back hook you don't want these guys to come apart so I, I go fairly tough on the thread here a lot of tension and then you take the wire that are closest to you fold it like that make a few turns with the thread you do the same on the the underside fold it kind of press it hard against the hook and tie it down and then you do this for like five millimeters to a centimeter and then you can cut the existing wire off here if you do it like this and then you put some super glue over it it's bullying it's bulletproof even if you get this one stagged in the bottom and you have very high mono and stuff like that you will not get these flies to go apart you will break the hook before you get them to go apart and then we just cover the whole stuff here with glue like that so then we put the thread all the way in the back here and now we're going to have this rattle positioned here on the on the belly so it really rides the correct way but to be able to make this and kind of hide this as nice as possible we first take we take some you can see you can see how it looks underneath here uh, we have the beads and then we have this rattle that is kind of uh, try to hide it as much as possible underneath here so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this chenille and then we're going to tie the rattle on then we're going to tie some chenille again try to hide this as much as possible so we put this on like that tie it forward and then you then we wrap this nice and tight here we don't put too much try to not have any gaps between it and go roughly around five to eight millimeters forward like that we cut this part off here and then we tighten this and then we're going to put this rattle inside and kind of hide this and I usually like to have it kind of almost touching the last bead here so what we do is let's get the material back here put some glue here that gets the rattle to kind of stick when you're starting to tie it in and then I tie it in not in this joint here where it's really where you're thinking you want to tie it in first just tie it in on top of it first and move it a little bit forward and then you can kind of make the leap or the jump over to this because if you start pulling the fly or pulling the thread on this one and then you tie it, tie it down on this one you're actually going to bend the hook because they are so strong these guys and the thread too so I like this is the way to do it it's at least my opinion and then some super glue and if you want to be really fussy here you can take that brown marker that I forgot at home uh, and you can color this brown here <coughs> but nobody will actually see it but at least not the pike so then we're going to put some more chenille on here we're just going to take like 15 centimeters or 20 centimeters again and then we are going to tie that in just in front of the uh, rattle here we need to f make sure that the glue is dry and then we are going to kind of wrap this in this gap here between the rattle so we can try to hide this one as much as possible and then I like to wrap kind of a few turns in front of it so we really make that hide 
as much as possible. We'll keep this because we're going to use it in the front. we we'll make a few turns and now it's... You don't see that much any longer. And now we got the tail and things are actually coming together here. Um, now we're going to put some yellow bucktail here on the belly. And we're going to have some brown hair on the top. And we're also going to in include some feathers here. So first we choose two feathers that are uh, not so long as the back ones here. Uh, these are going to kind of imitate the front fins of the fish. So we take... Oh, this fish is going to have three fins now. We're going to keep one of those for the next one. So two fins like this. This is once again saddle hackled. Just take some of the fuss off here. The soft, fussy, marabou-like material here. So now you have them like that. And then we're going to tie them in, just like we did with the first fly. We're going to tie them in facing like this, so they kind of move like fins. So we put them on the table, and we're going to take some yellow bucktail. Uh, small bunch again, like the same amount on, like we had on the belly here. Take some of the really small ones off and take some of the longer ones away too, like that. Put them on the table. And we're going to do the same thing with the brown hair. Not too many and not too few. Nice bunch like that. Take away all the short ones because this is going to ride on the top of it. And now it's, you can tie them forward and reverse it, but it's fairly tough. So I usually just tie them because it's hard to get them to move nicely over like that. So I usually tie them just straight like that. But it's important that you try to get as good spread on them as possible, you know. So what you want to do is you, you want to have that thread really secure. You want to put it down and really try to get that to lift as much as possible so you really get that nice volume even in the front fly here so pull it pretty tough actually as hard as you dare depending on what thread you're using and you want to have them spread evenly on the top fly like that so we're going to do the exact thing on the lower fly or the on the belly actually twist it over like that Get it down like that and give it a good pull. That pull didn't work because we took material from... This is when you take material too high up on the bucktail. It's too soft. It doesn't really include the amount of air that you need. So you need to go back and put the material further down on the tail and closer to the body because the hair includes much more air. And then you get that nice lifting action to them so we're just going to take those tail those tips off and we're going to do it again but do it right this time so we're going to kind of get that thread there and then give it a good pull like that and you can see that you have a much better spread to the material compared to the last one Give some good pulls here and we get that good lift and good volume to it. So we just kind of turn this around. We get the brown stuff on the top and the yellow on the belly. And we got the rattle included and everything like that. So we just kind of try to get the hair out of the way here as much as possible. Get that clamp on there. Try to trim this as nice and tidy as possible. Without cutting the thread or without breaking the scissor and stuff like that. So. There we go. And then we kind of make a nice underbody here. Oops. 
Let's see how this turns out. We take the clamp off. Mm. Looks good. This is going to lift over the hook here. So kind of need to give that a little bit extra lift. And this, as soon as this gets a little bit wet, is going to lay much more closer to the body. So put that clamp over there again. Now we just have to secure this with some glue. Because we have a lot of material under this thread here. Just clear the table a little bit, make it nice and tidy. And then we're going to tie these fins on here. So we're going to do it just like we did in the, in the fly in the back. We're going to try to get them nice and evenly here. So they're really looking like fins, not putting too much thread pressure on it. It can sometimes be a pain in the ass to get them straight. See if we can manage this time. Like that. So they are really facing out like that. And because we had some wet glue there, they are dead stuck now. Now we have the feathers looking like fins. We have the back and the belly. So now we're going to have some flashable here and also some ostrich hurl. And then we're just going to top it up with some turns of this. Chenille, and then we're kind of done. So, a few turns or a few strands of this Bauer Pike Flash, the darker one. You can take four or five, or this is actually four, so we'll take four. And then some matte gold here again. And of course, if you want the fly to have a little bit darker back, you just put some black or very, very dark brown flashable in it or feathers if you want to. We cut it into half again, tapered, taper the ends, putting on the table. And then I'm gonna use the full length of this holographic flash here, just to get it kind of a nice back, back to it that follows the whole fly all the way to the end. So put them on in the center of that other bunch there, put them up together and just try to mix them together, nice and tight. We have a nice taper to it. So we're just gonna tie them in on a 50-50 base, like we have tied the flash the whole time here. You just wanna have the flashable nicely spread on the 180 degrees, 180 degrees on the top of the fly. So if you have any fibers that are kind of lurking around and following on the way on the other side you need to be a little bit careful there so they don't mess up the top of the fly. That's a nice spread. We just fold these guys over like this. It's a little bit tougher here when you're tying the hook the opposite way but usually it works. Try to get most of the fibers on the top here. So these wing or these feathers can really work as fins. Don't having too much material that are in the way for them. Something like that. And then we're gonna put some glue on here again. Just a little bit. And then we're going to put some ostrich hurl again here. Trying to find some that are a little bit longer. Like that. Here, if you f think it's hard to tie them in all at once, you can just tie them in one and one, but usually it's not that hard to tie them in as a bunch. Just give that nice spread to them when you tie them in like that, and it's usually okay. So there we go. Tied in and secured. So what we're going to do now after this is kind of get the right distance here to the head because we're going to use this sculpting heads 
and um, we're going to secure that with epoxy. So these are the the heavier heaviest ones, and they're pretty heavy. Uh, they're used for sculpins and stuff like that, and uh, they have a very nice sinking rate. And they're also kind of it's like a saucer, you know. They really kind of lowers itself down in a really way because they're so wide. So that's why I like to have these on this on this type of flies. And this we're gonna need to fold down and push over like this. So we need to have this gap here uh, nice and filled with something. So what I like to do is I always measure this up so it looks good like that. And then we take that off again. We kind of nice make this as nice as possible because we're going to wrap some of this chenille here again. I think this one is slightly too short, so we'll keep that for another fly. Just take a little bit more here, like that. Uh, we tie this in, in the front here, and we go with the thread fairly far forward. And now we're trying to build this gap here between the head and the wing and the body and everything like that. Try to fill this as much as possible here. So it looks nice and neat when you're putting the head on. We'll just tie that off two turns there to take a look. And then we push this over here. And now it looks damn much better than it did before. So pretty happy with that. I'm just gonna take a few turns here, secure that, get all this material folded backwards like this. I like to have a little bit naked hook here with just thread because you want that epoxy to really get stuck here and really glue this head to the hook. So if you have too much loose materials this hook can actually or this head can actually start to twist, you know, so I like to have it something like this. And then I'm just gonna make sure that this looks nice. Looks pretty okay. So we're just gonna end this fly here with just a simple whip finish. We're gonna cut that off. And normally, like I tie flies, we put some glue on. Like that. So it looks good. Uh, we can take this one off here. We got the back to it here. We got the volume. We got all the flash here. And we got these feathers here. Actually straight too. So they're gonna look like fins. So we can put this clamp on again here with all the material. And now we're going to mix some epoxy. But when we're gluing these guys this one on, we're also at the same time are going to glue two epoxy eyes onto the head here. So I like to prepare those eyes so we're ready because we don't have that much drying time. This head has two kind of holes here that are supposed to put eyes on. These eyes are slightly bigger, but it's really a good position for the epoxy like this. So it usually they, they stick really well. So we determine what eyes are we going to use. This is going to be some of these yellow UV eyes. You can see when you hit them with some UV light, they really glow up. And my opinion is that they just fish awesome, these eyes. So we're going to use some five minute epoxy. As I probably told you guys before, but the whole key to working with epoxy is having it warm. Oops. Uh, cold epoxy are, are really hard to work with and also um, gets a lot of air inside it. So the warmer it is, the simpler it is to work with. When I'm home tying flies, I usually have them in warm water because then you have a very simple and good epoxy to work with. But otherwise, a good trick is to have a lighter. And if you have a piece of paper, you can just, before you mix it, you can just 
heat the epoxy up like this. Not too much, but because it's going to get warm and it's going to be much simpler to work with. And then you mix these together. When you're using epoxy, it's pretty nasty stuff, so you shouldn't sit in a too in an area that's too tight, you know, with no air exchange, because it can really hurt you. So be careful. So what we're going to do now is I like to put some some epoxy inside the head here. Not too much on the sides, but just on the top and bottom like that. And then I like to put some epoxy on the whole side here like this. Just to get, get this nice and strong. When you're pushing this head over now, you have to be a little bit careful because this hook eye is a different angle than you used to. So kind of get it straight on there, in here, and then twist it around like that. And then I usually take a small dubbing no needle here and trying to get some material into this gap here. Just to get this head as strong and durable as possible. And then you kind of want to have this straight here. Now it looks fairly straight, but we're going to glue the eyes on too, so it's going to be probably a little bit offset before we're done here in any case. So we just put a small drop of epoxy here in both of those. Take the eye, drop it in that place there. Take the other eye, drop it on the other side. And then you can take the back side of a dubbing needle and kind of push it a little bit so it gets really down in the glue. Before this cure, the, the glue cure, I would like to get this straight and nice. Like that. And then you just have to be patient for a few minutes. So the box is done. Just waited a few minutes. And um, so we can take this hair clamp off here. The head is nice and tight. I'm just going to get this off from the vise here. And we can kind of take a look how it looks like. So we got this. Take those eyes off here. So as you can see, we have this um, yellow body, uh, or belly actually, not body, but belly. Would have been much nicer to color that brown, but we have to live with that. And then um, we got the feathers sticking out on each side here, looking like fins. And then we're just going to attach this tail here. This is a, that's a wiggle tail that's custom painted by a good friend of mine, Mr. Jonathan Backlund from Sweden here. Uh, but you can have them whatever color you want. This is a brown trout version of it. But it's really, really, really going to swim nice. And this is really a badass bottom crawler. This is a fly that's going to catch really big pike that's feeding on burbot or eel put. But it's also a fly that if you tie it slightly smaller, it's going to be a killer fly for big brown trout. So give it a go.